So Revit gets you close, but there's still some refinement needed with a lot of modeling steps. And this is a really good illustration of that. These are stairs, of course, and you can see down at the bottom, I've got this awkward transition here between the landing and the stairs. And then I've also got the situation where between my rails extending from third up to fourth, I've got this gap uh, down below here on the landing at the second floor. I don't really have that problem. It's done a reasonably good job of filling in the gap, but I still have these kind of awkward gap situations in the rails themselves. And then I've got this kind of awkward transition here with the floor slab. So I need a way to clean that up and to create something that looks a little bit more tidy. And I've also got to deal with some of these other handrail issues so that I've got something that's more code compliant, something that looks a little bit more like this. So you can see down below here, I've got the transition between the floor and the stairs dealt with. Uh, I've got the transition at the landings for the handrails dealt with. So they wrap nicely around. There's no gaps or overlaps and they're all the required distance away from the wall. They also happen to be mounted to the wall, which is a little more typical in a stairwell like this. And then I've also added the condition here where I've got the extensions that I need, allowing me to grab onto the rail before I start ascending or descending. So those are all things that require some manual refinement, and we're going to settle into that in the next few set of steps. I'll set some uh, time markers down below in the description so you can kind of jump ahead to whatever part you might be needing to look at. It's going to be a fairly long video. My apologies for that, but there are a lot of things that we need to cover here. So let's get right at it. I'm going to be creating this in a brand new file and you can see here that I've got six levels set up. So main floor all the way up to fifth and then I've added a roof level as well. And they're all three meters apart. So 3000 millimeters is the separation between them. The last thing I'm going to do before I start actually creating the stairs is I'm going to go to my manage tab and on the project units button, I'm just going to specify that I want to have two decimal points when it comes to the format for the length. So we just want to make sure that we've got two because there's some really precise things that we need to do when we're creating the type properties for the stairs. And once that's all done, we can set this back to a more typical sort of zero decimal point so that we've got something that looks a little bit more conventional when it comes to our dimensions. So set that to two, we'll click okay two times and we're ready to start creating the stair, which we'll do down the main floor. Same process that you're used to. We'll just start with the architecture tab and activate the stair tool. And before we get into actually creating the sketch, we're going to make some changes here to the properties. By default, it usually wants to go to the assembled stair type. That's how it is with most templates. I'm going to change that to monolithic so that we can have something that mimics a concrete cast in place stair. And I'm going to make some changes to the type properties to reflect my local building codes. That might not be the case with yours. Um, I need a 280 minimum tread depth. So I'm going to change that here. I'm also going to make a subtle change and create an 1100 millimeter wide stair. Once that's done, I can click OK. Uh, be aware that you also have to make that change here. So in the instance properties for the stair, I have to also specify that I want 280 millimeters for the actual tread depth. And then I'm also just going to check to make sure that I've got the actual run width at 1100 millimeters up here as well. Now with all of that, I'm ready to start actually creating this sketch. And I'll just create the first click for the initial placement of the stair. And then I'll just kind of orient the stair properly and make my second click outside of the rectangle, just to indicate that I've got my full set of 17 risers taking me from level one to level two. And before I click on the green check to finish this, what I want to do is I want to click on the run or the sketch and just be aware that this is not the type properties for the stair. This is a set of properties just for the run. And that being the case, I can uncheck two boxes here so that it doesn't begin with a riser and it doesn't end with a riser. Now that might sound a little counterintuitive, but what I want to do is I want to create a condition where I've got kind of like an extra tread at the top to make for a better transition with the landing. And then I also want to have something similar on the bottom. When I initially make that change, you'll see that what happens here is it actually shortens the stairs and I no longer reach the second level. So I'm just going to change that and enter 3000. And then you'll see that the sketch or the run adjusts and now it's indicating that the first riser is here and then the last riser is actually uh, here. This is number 17 and it gives me a little bit of extra concrete here to kind of make that smooth transition into the landing. If I click on the green check, actually, sorry, one more thing I want to do before I click on the green check, I want to add some nosing as well. And I do that once again by just clicking on the properties for the run. So I'll click here on edit type. 
And then down below where it says nosing length, I'm just going to enter 25. We'll click OK. And I'll click on the green check. So the initial flight is done. What I'm going to do to check on this is just go to my self elevation. And this is where I want to make that point about it having added that extra little bit of concrete at the top. So now you can see that I'm going to have a smoother transition into the landing. Uh, there's an indication of the nosing. And down below, this is a little bit counterintuitive because of everything that happened at the top. Um, but just worth pointing out here that in the floor plan view, what it's actually showing me as the bottom of the stairs is a point down below here. If I was to create just a 2D detail line running from the tops of all of the nosing points here and extend that down to the floor, it's actually this point here that's showing in the floor plan view here as the bottom of the stairs. So just a subtle little thing to be aware of as we move through creating the landings. So that's the initial placement of the stairs. Uh, I'll pause there and then in the next video I'm going to show you how to create the landings.